Hey guys, and welcome back to part 5 of the Ask Me Anything slash Q&A thingy I'm doing. And let's hope that this time around we'll be able to answer a few more questions than the last times. But probably not gonna happen, so let's immediately get on with the first question. The equivalent exchange, if you could have if you could have one gumball in real grade, high grade, master grade and perfect grade format, which would it be? Um, well, that's already a question I kind of answered, but coming to think of it, I don't think in those previous questions I really answered the perfect grade, you know, definitively. And thinking about it, um, I think the Gelgook would be a great option. Well, Char's Gelgook. We already have the Zaku, we already have the Gundam, so the Gelgook would make a perfect kind of crowning thing uh, to go with them, you know, go from Zaku to the Gelgook. And on top of that, we already have the old 160 scale Gelgook cannon, so if we were to get the perfect rate Gelgook, we could immediately turn that into a Gelgook cannon, Johnny Ryden version. And I think that is a very solid note to start this video off with. But actually, come to think of it, you really say one Gumbla, so, you know, one Gumbla in real grade, um, Jim Sniper 2, uh, one in high grade, currently that would be the Jim Sniper, one in Mosque grade, Jim Sniper 2, there we go, moving on to Shotaro Hidari's question, first Gumbla, and this is actually a question I've been wondering for years, and yes, I know that sounds funny, but like I said in how I got into Gumbla, in the beginning, I was never really, um, how to put this correctly, I, well, when I first started building Gumpla, it was just another thing, it wasn't like, oh yeah, hell is yeah, Gumpla, 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 it was like a thing, you know, it's like with Pokemon, um, it was just something that was like a phase at the time, so I really don't remember which my first Gumpla was, and I kind of have these conflicting memories of, um, which should be my first Gumpla. Because um, for a while I thought that the Sandrock, the 144 scale Sandrock, the normal one, uh, was my first Gumpla. But the weird thing is, I I have memories of having like only that thing around to uh, toy around. But I remember when my parents um, bought this for me, I feel like I already knew what Gumpla was. So I have this feeling that I should have already had some models at that time. So I really can't remember. But that means it's going to be either one of three model kits, either the 144 scale Sandrock or Dead Scythe, or the 1100 scale Dead Scythe. Of course, all of these are the TV versions, so it's going to be either one of those. And I really wish I knew um, which my first Gunpla was, but I do remember my first Master Grade, and that is the... Uh, Master Grade Zeta Gundam 1.0. And for the reason... Uh, here, I don't know if it was like this in America, but here with our Gumpla, we got these little leaflets and they would have all the Gundam Wing models, like with all the different skill levels. And then at skill level 7, there was this one mobile suit me and a friend never knew about, and that was the Zeta Gundam. So that was like this illustrious mobile suit. We could never figure out what was it about. And you know, in Belgium, and I think in most of Europe perhaps as well, the only thing we really had was Gundam Wing. We didn't have G Gundam, we didn't have any of the other Gundams. And if you were just the average kid or the average guy, you only knew about Gundam Wing. So that was like this weird mobile suit we never knew about. So I distinctly remember getting that one. So, uh, moving on. Azen Zephyr, if you're looking to do an unscripted ask me anything, but you find yourself pausing too much trying to find a good answer, just do some cuts. No need to do a whole thing in one take. The post process is your friend. Don't worry, I've um, had to do those cuts quite a while in my other videos. You know, cutting a few things out, throwing something in, you know, you always, when you're doing a review, you'll always forget like this one piece of articulation and you kind of have to throw that in there. But thanks for the advice. And well, actually this time I'm gonna try to do it in one take because I finally upgraded my SD card and now I can record up to an hour and a half instead of 10 minutes, which rocks. Now moving on to Axel Nightmare and four thumbs up. So these are gonna be some great questions. First of all, what are you studying in college? Well, right now I'm kinda studying a teacher English history, but that really, really isn't my thing. Got totally fed up with that. I've done it for too long and you know, I never was really into being a teacher in the first place. Actually, I don't really, that was probably the biggest mistake in my life. So I, quit that, I'm now kind of like 
half studying uh, to get my study points and I don't know if that's the system also in America if that's only European system you know you have these study points and you get them when you pass uh, your classes so I'm now doing like half of my classes uh, to get my study points back I already ditched the other half of my classes and I got well it's a complicated system but the thing is I'm now studying a bit uh, to get all of my study points back to so that next year well next school year I can go study Japanese again or Japanology as they call it in the trade uh, second one do you have a girlfriend or boyfriend can't neglect the possibility well I have neither of them but um, I'm still gonna be on the lookout for a girlfriend probably next school year uh, once I go on to study Japanology however a friend of mine who is taking salsa lessons at the moment uh, told me that he found this that in his salsa lesson there's this girl who also studies Japanology and he thinks that she's totally my type so hey who knows maybe if he can hook me up with something look forward to that um, I wonder how that's gonna turn out you know he told me she was good looking and that she has a great personality so maybe maybe three have you been watching Bill Fighters and so do you love it hell yeah Totally, Build Fighters is awesome. I love Build Fighters. It's, I wasn't expecting anything at all from Build Fighters. Like, seriously, my expectations were like minimal. I was expecting something for to watch for the action with no story at all. I was expecting to watch a, a Gundam, a Gumpla commercial. That's my expectations I had. I wasn't expecting a great story, but I totally got a nice story, endearing characters, great action scenes, and also awesome model kits you know James Iver K9 uh, we got the wing gun out of it wing gun finiche and that wing gun finiche something thumbs something something so yes build fighters is totally awesome and I really hope they're gonna make a second season of it then number four what is your biggest gumpla holy grail at the moment and well that's a difficult question because um, the thing about Gumble is that usually you can still get all of the normal released model kits at you know give or take a few years if we're going to be very broad you know uh, the old ones you can they usually get like restocked every few years so my biggest Gumpla holy grail I think my most expensive one is my perfect rate strike Gundam with the uh, with the sky grasper but you know that's not really this whole real because anyone can buy the perfect rate if you go into eBay right now. There's probably like a uh, hundred hits on that. You know, probably not a hundred, but you know what I mean. Actually, hmm. so my biggest holy grail would probably be something like the um, the Jim Sapper Two White Dingo version because that's once again something you can't really get that easily. And the last time I checked on eBay, I found one that went for over a hundred dollars. Guess I think that might be my biggest holy grail at the moment. Or wait up a second. No. Wait. Um. Those. Ah, uh, now we'll get a wonder what that name was. Uh, armored ladies. Yes, of course. Uh, those old things. Those are like very weird and hard to get. Uh, the armored ladies, the Mark II and the Zeta Gun. So that might be my biggest holy grail because that's something not a lot of people are gonna have or even know about. That's a good thing, you know, to the people watching, do you guys even know what the Armored Lady line is? Well, there are actually three of them released, and think of them as the Armor Girl project, but very, very, very basic and a model kit, you know, from the 80s. Actually, I think they also released the VF1S uh, from Macross. So yeah, that would probably be my biggest holy grail as far as Gumpla goes. However, if we were to make it a bit broader, my entire collection, that would probably be either my 160 scale, 160 scale Mayrin figure or my um, Japanese Hyakushiki PlayStation 2. Number five, what's your biggest fear in life? Mine's spiders. Um, well, for spiders, I'm not particularly scared of them. But, you know, if one were to suddenly, if there's like a slightly bigger one falling on my hand, yes, I'd probably scream um throw it off and kill it so that's my that's how far my uh, fear for spiders go but then again the biggest spiders we have around here are like this so um, if you live in america or somewhere where there are bigger spiders then yes if you have like those big bushy spiders then i think my biggest fear would probably be spiders as well but yeah 
in Belgium, the biggest ones you get are like this and you see like one a year if you're unlucky. But I think right now my biggest fear would be the house burning down and my entire collection going up in flames. Oh, and of course, when, considering that nobody is home, you know. Uh, <laughs> then, uh, number six, what was high school or its equivalent like for you? Hmm, high school itself was very average, not a, real, not a lot happened, um, I wasn't particularly bullied, wasn't particularly popular, it was like, I was like that guy everyone knew, but I wasn't really a super close friend to anyone in my high school itself, I usually hung out with people um, who weren't in my high school, and yeah, that's pretty much what high school was, like, Actually, I don't really see a lot of the people um, I went to high school with. You know, my best friend in high school, I haven't seen him in years, actually. I wonder if he's still alive. Um, oh, yeah, coming back. <laughs> and let's see. Oh, yeah, one thing um, that was really cool about high school was that uh, whenever we had these assignments, I would always try to incorporate anime. So everyone in my high school also knew that I was the Japanese guy, you know, and the one who was really into Japan. So I have these really great memories of doing like all kinds of random stuff. Uh, we went on a school trip one day and suddenly one of my, um, one of it was a classmate of a few years back and she suddenly told me, hey, um, they have these, um, Ma they have these Japanese comics uh, you usually uh, read in that thing we had to go to. So, and that was really cool. I went there and when we had to go back to the um, point where we had to gather, I like casually strolled back there with a bag of manga. So that was really some of the great memories I have. Uh, we went to Paris one day uh, with school as well. And once again, they had this, uh, the Virgin Mega Store it was called. And it had this giant manga uh, selection there. So once again, when we got back, um, uh, when we had to gather again, I once again strolled in there with a big bag of manga. So those are some great memories I have. Oh yeah, another, uh, this one is a great memory. And that one was from, well, I don't really know what the name of this class would be in English. The name we had to give it was like aesthetic, aesthetics, blah, blah aesthetics, something like that. Um, the thing we did there, um, we kind of saw the history of art, but the guy told specifically told us that no, it's not the history of art, even though it totally was, but I guess he meant something amongst the lines of, we see the history of art, but the goal of this clause is to appreciate it, or something amongst those lines, whatever. So we had one assignment, and that is that we had to write a report on two pieces of art. You already... I think you already can see where this is going. And then on one of those pieces, we had to uh, do a presentation. So everyone, of course, picked the traditional arts. They had vases, they had paintings, they had boring, boring, more boring, super boring, and even more super boring pieces of art. I, however, went totally against that, and I picked the Rurouni Kenshin manga as art not kidding, and my second piece of art was Halo Combat Evolved, the video game. Yes, I actually did that, and my best friend at that time told me, dude, don't do it, he's gonna fail you so hard, he's not gonna appreciate that, don't you do it. And I was like, fuck you, I'm gonna do it. Uh, art is what you want it to be, um, art is personal, I'm gonna do this, I totally don't feel like writing a five-page report on a painting I don't give a flying fuck about. I'm gonna do this, and this is either gonna be fantastic or this is gonna be a colossal failure. And of course, this was one of these classes that, you know, like, it's like religion classes. It's like, nobody cares if you fail it. And so I did it, and the teacher loved it. Um, my points were, like, above average, so... I think Roni Kenshin manga was um, slightly above average and my Halo Comet Evolve thing was really good. And so I got to do the presentation on Halo Comet Evolve and that was really awesome to see. Like the person before me had like a vase and then I come up and I start playing a cutscene of Halo Comet Evolve. That was awesome. Would have also been great if I could do the Roni Kenshin one, but hey, 
Halo Combat Evolved, a presentation uh, during an art class is awesome. So that's really... That's kind of like what high school was for me. It was very average, but whenever I could, I incorporated mangas. Oh yeah, one time during French class, I also bought this... Um, you know, I'm sure most of you are aware that I always read my mangas um, in French. And I also had this novel of Full Metal Alchemist hanging around, and it was in French. So, for French classes, I got to read Full Metal Alchemist. And she actually was able to ask me a solid question, you know, um, name me five realistic things and five unrealistic things about uh, the stuff they deal with in the manga, uh, in the novel, and why. So, hey, well played, teacher, well played. Moving on, uh, what is your name? If you just want to say your first name, that's cool. Well, it's no big mystery. Um, I actually come to think about my Facebook is linked on my um, main page here on YouTube. So it's really not a big mystery. And also I hinted to that in my subscriber thank you video. Remember there was this one subscriber. Oh, scroll, scroll. Remember this guy, I told him I really liked his first name. Hint, hint, hint. Yeah, so my name is Vincent. And my last name is, well, this is gonna sound a bit weird in English, but Bosmans. Or, and Bos means woods and Mans means man. So I'm a woodman. Yes. Um, you know, come to think of it, didn't I? Ah, yes, and that is why the character in one of my stop motion videos is called Commander Woods. Mm hmm, see what I did there? And good luck with the live response video. Thanks, man. Oh, moving on. And well, Axe Limer, congrats on the great questions. And a lot of people apparently agreed with you. So, moving on. And oof, only 16 minutes in so far. Then, uh, Benjamin Hopkins. One, do you find that being obligated to review your kits affects your enjoyment of them at all? Nope, not at all. And it's really, uh, I like reviewing them, so it's really not. And then again, you know, obligation, I don't want to sound like too weird, but you know, I'm not really obligated. If I don't really feel like reviewing a kit, I don't review it. But the thing is, it's not really that I'm looking up to reviewing. It's just something I really like. And even though I say, I said in my videos that this is something I'm going to have to keep doing. It's more like um, out of enjoyment. It's not like I'm really being forced, forced uh, to review some kits. And the only thing I don't quite like about reviewing it is um, editing a video together. That's really the only pain there is. So, But it really doesn't affect my enjoyment at all. The only thing that I've noticed that this had an effect on is that now I'm more inclined to buy the new models at launch date. Sometimes in the past I um, would have waited on a model kit or, you know, I thought, nah, I'll buy that later on. For example, the... Um, oh yeah, the Gundam X, for example, that was one I didn't pick up at launch date, but if that were to be released right now, I would totally pick that up at launch. Then number two, what language do you primarily speak outside of your videos? Dutch, or to be more specific, Flemish, because you know, I live in Belgium, and Flemish Dutch is very different from the Dutch they speak in the Netherlands. And even then, if we're gonna go into dialects, um, that's even more specific. So then, uh, moving on to uh, Vincent Bessie. Number one, uh, Wing Zero Endless Waltz or Wing Zero TV version. Definitely TV version. The Endless Waltz is just, well, the wings are too super robotish. I'm, that's the one problem I have with um, the Endless Waltz version. Overall, it looks quite good, you know, when you look at the Katoki version. But... Well, I mean the Kadoki version of the original wing it looks really good, but the thing is those wings, they're too super robotish and I really can't stand it. And that's also the reason why I do like the wings on the Gundam Girl, you know, the AGP figurine. Because that thing's not supposed to be realistic, but the thing is, Gundam is trying to be realistic, so definitely TV version. Then, uh, number two, have you ever played any Mega Man games? Yes, on the Game Boy, the one game I bought a few weeks ago, and I can't remember, was it Mega Man 2 or Mega Man 3? I don't of them. Number three, why do you like Meirin so much? Hmm, that is a very good question. And, hmm, I, 
I thought about this for a while and the thing is um, I can't really pinpoint to one specific reason but then again why would you say that I like Marin that much and was it that easy to pick up on <clears throat> but moving on um, why do I like her so much and there are I think a number of reasons for this first of all um, yes the most obvious thing is I do like the way she looks that is obvious and then what I also like about her is her personality and when we just look at Gundam see Destiny another thing about Meirin is that she is one of the few believable characters she actually has a personality that is somewhat multifaceted she does experience character change she reacts to situations in a realistic way and she's actually useful you know she saved Atherin um, unlike a certain other blonde uh, which doesn't do a damn thing other than cry so especially when it comes to female characters I think um, none of the other characters really hold a candle to her um, Lacus might be a strong character but she is about as multi-dimensional as a piece of paper unfortunately and I don't want to offend anyone who likes her but you know the thing is Lacus doesn't really experience a lot but then again it's not about Lacus Mayrin um why do I like well her personality as well and the thing is I can kind of relate to her as well um a few on a few of her um you know on a few of her personality quirks so the one thing is early on in the series we see that she isn't all that confident you know that one scene where she tries on her sister's skirt and it doesn't fit so it's obvious that she doesn't really seem to have a lot of self-confidence which is something I also had for a very long time and you know Going back to the high school question of um, Axel Nightmare, and uh, thing is, all the way through high school, I never really had a lot of self confidence. I was like, mm, the thing is, I was always um, pretty average, but in high school, I wasn't really spectacularly good at something. I was always like, nah, I'll pause, uh, things go, and no, 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 no. It wasn't until like I got uh, 17 or 18 that I really got good at. Um, well, in my class, I was, because, you know, I was in a, in high school, um, at the end of high school, I was pretty good at math, so that was the one thing I finally started, uh, shining in, I was good at French and stuff like that, so, all through high school, I never really was particularly good in something other than video games, so, I never really had a lot of self-confidence, but this has definitely changed over the last year, and that's something Marin experienced as well, you know, a lot of, um, character build-up, and at the end, she gets better, so I guess that's also one thing I can really relate to and I think there was another reason as well um, but yeah I don't know I kind of I don't really particularly know why I'm so drawn to her but maybe it's like part uh, I can relate to her I like the way she looks and also also um, in Gundam Sea Destiny she just really stood out to me as a great character so yeah that's really um, all I can say about why I really like her that much and also just like um, the way she reacted in like all those and you know I really like the way she reacted to all those situations in a realistic way it's not like she's uh, fake she just felt real to me but then again maybe that's just my personal bias then number four favorite Gundam girl well that's easy besides Mary damn it <clears throat> well so my second favorite Gundam girl uh, let's see who that would be and I think this might come as a surprise to someone because you know my second favorite Gundam girl is someone with pink hair uh, she's quite idolized by a number of people maybe even bigger people than we can imagine uh, she's the captain of a ship she appears in a series well she first makes her debut in a series that in general a lot of people really like um, but in the second series she appears in, that series gets a lot of hate. And, you know, who could that character be? Of course, it's Haman Khan. Didn't see that one coming, did you? And, yeah, Haman is really my second favorite Gundam girl. And that is because, not because of Double Zeta Gundam or because of Zeta Gundam, because in those series, to me, she was like random jump cut um i don't know what happened with the camera but apparently it can only record even though my memory card is big enough to hold um an hour and a half of footage it apparently refuses to record longer than um, i don't know how long was it 25 minutes 30 minutes 
and it just said, you know, I'm gonna stop recording right here. And now, um, where was I? Um, oh yeah, so I didn't um, particularly like Haman in Zeta Gundam or Double Zeta Gundam. You know, to me in those series she was like just the the bad guy, to put it very stereotypical and very black and white. But when I read uh, Char's Deleted Affair, my affection for Haman really, really grew. And so that's when we get to know more about um, her backstory. So that's, and you know, she has this really sad backstory. And then you can really see where she's coming from in Zeta Gundam and Double Zeta Gundam. So Shara's Lady Affair really helped me to understand Haman as a person and not just as a villain who has a cold heart because she's a cold hearted bitch, uh, to put it like that. So, yeah, that really made her my second favorite Gundam girl besides Marin. But I also want to say one final thing, and that is that um, Ayla Yurkiainen, I hope I pronounced that correctly, is also quickly becoming one of my favorites because, you know, um, the way she was, she also started off kind of like Haman. She has this really sad backstory, but unlike Haman, she did become more positive. But the thing I don't want to say that she's my favorite is because, of course, I've only just seen Build Fighters. I really like Build Fighters, and, you know, maybe. I'm just overhyping Isla a little bit because I've just because I've only just seen the series, but she's definitely also a very she's very high on the list, but like that. But currently, Haman is definitely my favorite Gundam girl besides Mayrin, and I've kind of lost track of how long we've been going, but I think it should at least be close or over half an hour already. So let's end it with that with my favorite Gundam girl. That's also a solid note to end on with. And we start with a solid note, so this is the best way to end it. Well, see you guys next time.